G.K. Chesterton once said that tolerance is a virtue of a man without conviction. We see that in this increasingly pluralistic world we live in, where those who call for tolerance the most are often the ones who actually practice it the least. As followers of Jesus who believe in absolute, unchanging truth, can we offer a better way? I'm James. Let's talk about it. Friends, thanks for joining us today. The problem with terms like tolerance is they can be defined so many different ways and that definition is constantly changing. Theologian D.A. Carson has a really helpful classification. He divides tolerance into old tolerance and new tolerance. Old tolerance would acknowledge the fact that there is absolute, objective, unchanging truth, but also recognize that people have many different understandings of what that truth is. We can discuss it, we can debate it, we can dialogue about it, but at the end of the day, we still treat one another with kindness and respect. If that's your definition of tolerance, I'm fine with it. That's just a form of loving your neighbor. It gets a little trickier with the new tolerance. New tolerance would say that all beliefs and ideas are equally valid. And friends, that's simply not possible. Two contradictory statements can't both be true. My friend Andy Rassman did a really good video presentation on that, which you can see here. The Bible calls us ambassadors for Christ. An ambassador is a representative on foreign soil. We represent Jesus on, in a world that is very hostile to him in a lot of ways. So he said that because of that, we shouldn't expect other people to tolerate us. In fact, he openly said people will hate us. That can take on a lot of different forms from simply losing friends, being made fun of, on down to in some cases, uh, people having to lay down their lives for the gospel's sake, and that happens a lot more than you may think. And Jesus said, we may be faced with that ourselves at some point. I would encourage you to look at the Voice of the Martyrs website for some very powerful stories on that. But as far as some of the things that the world challenges us on, they, could, they would say, how can you believe in something as ancient as the Bible? But friends, the fact is, the Bible has stood the test of time for good reasons. You can find more about that in this video. Others would take issues on our beliefs in things like marriage and sexuality, but in the years that the world has done it the opposite way, what has that gotten us? The tragic, horrible rash of things like sexual assault, human trafficking, sexually transmitted diseases, abortion, divorce, all those things are the direct result of rejecting God's standards in those areas. Some would think it's bigoted for us to say that Jesus is the only way, but Instead of getting mad at God for only providing one way, can't we just be thankful he did provide us with a way? So in responding to the people who would ask us these things and would hate us and mistreat us for the sake of the gospel, the Bible offers us something even more powerful than tolerance. You know what that is? Love. More specifically, the love of God lived out in individual believers' lives. Jesus did not tolerate sin. But what he did do is love us in spite of it, even to the point of laying down his life to save us from it. And that kind of radical love is exactly what he expects us to live our, out in our own lives and following him. Here are some very powerful and sobering words from the lips of Jesus. You have heard it said that you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Romans 12, 20 further tells us, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. 1 Corinthians 13, the classic love chapter of the Bible, describes for us what this kind of love looks like. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Jesus said that this kind of love in our lives would be what the world recognizes as his disciples were. Not all our angry political rhetoric and uh, other things like that. Us living out Jesus' love in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis and presenting the gospel in that love is what could ultimately change the world. I'm James. Thank you for joining us. And as always, I invite you to like and share any comments you might have. Share this video with our friends. And of course, subscribe so you can you can get my future studies and commentaries as soon as they come out. Thanks again for watching, and as always, keep it real.